Basically, the iPhone is a device that is very easy to use. But if you really want to achieve the best possible video quality with your iPhone, you should take a closer look at the different possible settings. Today, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the video mode on the iPhone 13, 13 Pro and Pro Max to get the best results. And if you like the music in this video, take a closer look at our today's sponsor. All the songs in this video are from the music licensing service Audio, but more on that later. Actually, the iPhone has four different video modes, video, cinematic, slow-mo and time-lapse. While video and slow-mo are self-explanatory, cinematic is simply put a kind of portrait mode for video. In time-lapse mode, your iPhone takes pictures at certain intervals and then merges them to a video clip. In this way, a kind of accelerated clip is created. Let's first take a look at the interface in standard video mode and what features it has. It is important that you are familiar with all the features of the interface so that you can make the right decisions at the right moment. Let's start with the different functions of the shutter button. It is clear that if you tap the shutter button briefly, you can start and stop capturing a video. But if you tap and hold the shutter button, the recording will only last until you lift your finger. This is ideal if you want to take a short clip. If you change your mind during the recording and want to shoot a longer video, simply drag the shutter button to the lock on the right. The white button on the right allows you to take photos during the recording. By the way, the two volume buttons have the same functionality as the shutter button. The white lines represent the grid. They are there to help you compose your shot. In filmmaking as in photography, applying the rule of thirds often leads to more interesting results. This means that depending on the situation, your subject should not be placed exactly in the middle but rather on the left or right line. You can deactivate the grid in the settings if you wish. Above the menu with the modes, you can see a yellow 1x. This means that your iPhone is currently using the main camera. If you tap on 0.5, you switch to the ultra-wide camera, and by tapping on 3, you switch to the camera with the telephoto lens, which is only available on the iPhone 13 Pro. You should know that the choice of the camera can have a big impact on the image quality and does not only change the composition of the image. There are a few things to keep in mind when choosing the camera or lens. The different cameras have different focal lengths and therefore lead to different levels of distortion. The spatial depth in the image is represented very differently. The wider the lens, the more distortion there will be. Close objects are shown very large, objects in the background very small. This usually has a negative effect on close-ups of faces. For such cases, you should therefore use the camera with the highest possible focal length. On the iPhone 13, this would be the main camera. On the 13 Pro or Pro Max, the camera with the telephoto lens. On the other hand, the ultra-wide lens is of course suitable for spectacular landscape shots or the depiction of spatial depth. Apart from that, the different cameras have different sensors and different apertures. The larger the aperture and the larger the sensor, the better the result will be in low-light conditions, for example in the evening or when shooting indoors with artificial light. The image will contain fewer artifacts and simply look cleaner overall. On the iPhone 13, the main camera has a significantly larger sensor and with 1.6 a significantly larger aperture than the ultra-wide camera with 2.4. It captures significantly more light and will therefore clearly achieve the better results in low light. On the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, the ultra-wide camera has been improved this year. Nevertheless, it still has a much smaller sensor and a smaller aperture than the main camera. However, the camera with the telephoto lens achieves the worst results in low light, as with 2.4 it has the smallest aperture on the 13 Pro. Again, you should use the main camera in low light and get closer to your subject. I love the telephoto lens, but in low light conditions you should do without it and use the main camera. Besides the optical properties, there is another important difference between the different cameras of your iPhone. The choice of the lens also affects the stabilization of your video. Normally, the wider the focal length of the lens, the more stable a video will look. The ultra-wide lens would therefore normally have advantages over the other two lenses of your iPhone. Unfortunately, the ultra-wide camera is not optically stabilized on either the iPhone 13 or the 13 Pro or Pro Max. That means it has neither stabilization in the lens nor stabilization of the sensor. The images are only digitally stabilized. Nevertheless, I would say that on the iPhone 13, shots taken with the ultra-wide camera look more stable than shots taken with the main camera, whose sensor is stabilized. So keep that in mind when you move around with your iPhone. In such a case, you should use the ultra-wide lens. On the 13 Pro and Pro Max, however, it is not so clear, because on both Pro models, the main camera features optical stabilization of the lens as well as stabilization of the sensor. And tests have shown that this combination makes the shots taken with the main camera look at least as good 
if not more stable. However, you should do without the telephoto lens if you move around with the camera. The shots will look very shaky. Apart from the choice of different cameras or lenses, there are also intermediate solutions. If you tap and hold on the number, a wheel appears with which you can zoom in and out more precisely. On the iPhone 13, a maximum of 3 times zoom is available in video mode. On the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, a maximum of 9 times zoom. Here, however, you should give some thought to the image quality. Any value above 1 on the iPhone 13 or above 3 on the 13 Pro will lead to a digital zooming in on the main camera. This leads to a clear decrease in image quality. For any value between 0.5 and 1, the iPhone will digitally zoom in on the ultra-wide lens. This will also lead to a decrease in image quality. The same applies to any value between 1 and 3 on the iPhone 13 Pro. Here, it will digitally zoom in on the main camera. For optimal image quality, you should therefore limit yourself to the focal lengths of the two or three cameras. That is 1x or 0.5x on the iPhone 13 and 3x on the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max. For a framing in between or above, you should rather use your legs. It is clear that you can also use two fingers to zoom. Here, the number of the respective zoom factor always adjusts. As you can see, when it comes to optimal image quality, there is also a lot to consider when choosing the lens. By the way, one of the lenses of the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max has a very special capability. The ultra-wide lens is able to focus on extremely close objects. This way, you can show small details very large. Apple calls this macro mode. And with the macro mode, you can also take interesting shots in video mode. It doesn't really matter which camera is active. If you get very close to an object before you start recording, your iPhone will automatically activate the macro mode and switch to the ultra-wide lens. You will notice this by the strange image jumps. However, if you have already started recording with the main camera or the telephoto lens, then the automatic camera switch will not happen. The macro mode is deactivated and you can no longer focus close. Therefore, if you want to take a kind of dolly with macro, you have to activate the ultra-wide lens before you start recording and then maybe zoom in up to 0.9. If you don't like the way the iPhone automatically switches cameras to activate the macro mode, you can disable the automatic switch to the ultra-wide lens in the settings. Things. Correct exposure and focus are also crucial for optimal image quality. Especially if you use the main camera or the telephoto lens, certain parts of the image may be in focus and others not. This is especially the case when there are objects in the near foreground. Your iPhone will always set the focus automatically and it does this very well. However, you may not be happy with the automatic focus and want to adjust it manually. You can do this easily by tapping on the object you want to be in focus. The exposure will then also adjust to the new focus area. However, if you then move the camera, the focus and exposure will change again automatically. But especially when shooting videos, you may want to perform certain camera movements and prevent the focus and exposure from changing automatically. You can lock the focus and exposure by tapping and holding on the object you want to have in focus. The AEAF lock icon appears at the top of the screen. The exposure and focus will now not change even if you move the iPhone. If you are still not happy with the exposure, you can adjust it using the sun icon next to the yellow square. If you swipe the sun up, the image will get brighter. If you swipe it down, it will get darker. This works when focus and exposure are locked as well as when the automatic is active. However, when a new focus point is set, your adjustments are cancelled. When shooting video, it can be useful to constantly overexpose or underexpose your image slightly, regardless of whether the focus changes or not. Remember that correct exposure is more important when shooting video than when shooting stills, especially because video files don't have as much information as individual photos, and therefore can't be edited as well. If you swipe your finger slightly upwards, two new icons appear. On the left, there is the flash, and on the right, the symbol for the exposure compensation control. If you tap on it, a slider will appear with which you can adjust the exposure. If you adjust the exposure in this way, the negative or positive value is retained and all further shots will be underexposed or overexposed. But why should you even deviate from the automatic exposure? The fact is that the automatic exposure of the iPhone works incredibly well and highlights that is the very bright areas in the image are also very well protected by the extremely high dynamic range, even in difficult situations. There are hardly any overexposed areas in the image. Exposure control on the iPhone is therefore less about preventing burned out highlights and more about creative control. In other words, what mood do you want to convey and should the image therefore be a little brighter or darker? You can also activate the flash for video recordings by tapping on the flash icon on the left side of the screen. Yes, this can sometimes be necessary and useful when it is very dark. However, do not expect excellent results. 
the very top of the screen, on the left, you will find the icons of the features that are currently active, for example the flash or the exposure compensation control. If you tap on the flash, you can also deactivate it here. Much more important, however, are the two settings in the upper right corner, the settings for resolution and frame rate. As far as the resolution is concerned, you have the choice between HD, that is 1080, and 4K. Since today, as I said, we are talking about how you can achieve the best possible video quality with your iPhone, you should choose 4K here. This leads to a few advantages and disadvantages. The image has a much higher resolution than an HD image. It therefore looks much better, especially on larger screens. You can also crop in and adjust the framing in post without this immediately leading to a significant drop in image quality. The disadvantage of 4K is clear. The higher resolution requires significantly more storage space. In addition, older computers sometimes have difficulty processing the footage. On the right, you can set the frame rate. In 4K, 24, 30 and 60 frames per second are available. Basically, the more frames per second, the smoother and perhaps more natural your footage will look. However, professional movies are generally shot at 24 frames per second. Our eyes have long since become accustomed to this low frame rate. Therefore, a video shot at 24 frames per second looks more cinematic than one shot at 30 or 60 frames per second. For this reason, I usually use this frame rate. However, especially if there is a lot of movement in the image, 24 frames per second can look a bit jerky and choppy. If that bothers you and you prefer a more fluid look, then you should choose 30 frames per second. I would only choose 60 frames per second if you want to capture slow motion shots. You can slow down a shot taken with 60 frames per second to 40% in post and get some really cool slow motion shots in 4K. On the other hand, if you don't need slow motion, I wouldn't use 4K 60. The high frame rate requires even more storage space. Your iPhone also tries to use as little storage space as possible for your video recordings. For this reason, the footage is compressed as much as possible. Unfortunately, this leads to so-called compression artifacts in certain situations. These can significantly reduce the image quality. Such compression artifacts occur more frequently and more strongly with 4K60 than with low frame rates. And there is another situation where you should do without high frame rates. And that is in low light. In low light conditions, low frame rates are advantages because there is more time to let the light in. You will therefore achieve better results in these situations with 24 frames per second. And while we were on the subject of cinematic shots, let's take a closer look at the cinematic video mode. As already mentioned at the beginning, this is a kind of portrait mode for video. This means that the iPhone artificially creates a blurred background. Since this blur effect is actually used all the time in professional movies, we perceive it as very cinematic. Unfortunately, cinematic video is only available in 1080 and not in 4K. Also, the iPhone absurdly shoots at 30 frames per second which actually contradicts my statement about the right frame rate for a cinematic look. Since the iPhone creates an artificial blur, you can tap on a subject to decide what should be sharp, that is in focus. A yellow rounded bar appears. If it is a person or something else that is moving, you can activate tracking with another tap. The bar changes and the AF tracking lock message appears. The iPhone will now try to keep the subject in focus, even if it is moving. If you want to lock the focus on a certain spot, you do this as in normal video mode by tapping and holding on the spot. Now the focus remains on this spot, regardless of where the subjects are moving in the image. In cinematic mode, you can use the main camera and the camera with the telephoto lens. Apart from the flash and the exposure compensation control, you can also set the f-stop. Similar to a professional camera with the f-stop, you can adjust the intensity of the effect. The following applies, the smaller the value, the stronger the effect, and the higher the value, the smaller the amount of blur. You can also see the set value in the top right corner. The cinematic mode is basically a cool feature, however, it is still not fully perfected. There are often imperfections at the edges. If you are really looking for optimal quality, you should rather do without the cinematic mode at the moment. A few words about the slow-mo and the time-lapse mode. In slow-mo mode, as the name suggests, you can shoot slow motion videos. To do this, your iPhone shoots a video at 120 or 240 frames per second. At the moment, this is only possible in HD. Basically, you should only use this mode if you really need it. The reduced resolution and the high number of frames per second lead to a considerable decrease in image quality. Especially shots with 240 frames per second really don't look good. Sometimes, however, it is fun to shoot such a slow motion video and if there is a lot of action, it can lead to interesting results. I recommend that in such cases, you get as close as possible to the action. You want your subject to be as big as possible. 
This is the best way to hide the poor image quality. The time-lapse mode is also an interesting feature. You can use it to convey the passage of time very well and for example enhance your travel videos. Unfortunately, there are no settings that you could change. I would just like to add here that you can also move around with the iPhone in good lighting conditions. Hold it steady and at a constant height and move towards or around an object in predefined lines for example. The iPhone will stabilize the image afterwards and interesting hyperlapses will result. In low light conditions, however, you should use the iPhone on a tripod. If you're interested in what tripods are available and what my favorite iPhone accessories are for filmmaking, check out the links in the video description. And before we take a look at the video settings in the settings of the camera app, I would like to address a topic that is at least as important for a good video as the image quality – music and sound effects. As you probably know, you have to have permission to publish videos with other people's music, especially if you want to monetize your videos on YouTube for example. There are subscription-based music services that offer thousands of songs for monthly fees. But do you remember the days when you only had to pay once for unlimited use? Audio is the only music service that offers lifetime use of music for a one-time payment. All the songs in this video are from Audio and I have to say that I am very happy with the quality of the music. One of the great strengths of Audio is the simple and clear interface. For each song you can immediately tell if it's a purely instrumental piece or if there are vocals as well. So if you are still looking for good music for your videos at a reasonable price, Check out Audio's offer. Of course, you will find a link in the video description. In the settings of the camera app, you can make some very important adjustments. Let's take a look at the format first. Here you can choose between high efficiency and most compatible. If you choose high efficiency, your iPhone will capture videos in the HEVC codec. This codec can compress the video files much more effectively. This means that the file sizes will be smaller and I mean significantly smaller. Some older devices have problems with this codec. The important question now is whether the choice also has an impact on the image quality. With earlier iPhones, the high efficiency mode sometimes led to worse results. According to Apple, there is no loss of image quality. I have compared a few shots here and as you can see, there is hardly any difference between the HEVC shot and the shot taken with most compatible, which is the old codec. Basically, I would recommend using the high efficiency mode. This is necessary anyway if you want to shoot in 4K60, 1080-240 in cinematic mode or videos in HDR. And that brings us to the next important topic, HDR and the question of whether you should capture your videos in HDR and Dolby Vision, which has been possible since the iPhone 12. You can switch the HDR mode on and off in the record video menu. I have already made a very detailed video on this topic. Today I will explain the topic of HDR in a roughly simplified way. With HDR your iPhone can capture and display video clips that have significantly higher brightness values than a normal video clip. This means that the very bright areas in the image, for example light sources, can be displayed much brighter than with a normal video. The difference is huge. This makes the footage look much more realistic and natural. It has much more contrast because the difference between very dark and very bright is much bigger. In addition, your iPhone uses a 10-bit color depth for HDR recordings. So there are many more color gradations between dark and bright. All this of course allows for a much better image quality. However, there is a crucial catch. You need an HDR screen to display the footage correctly and with these special characteristics. In addition, you also have to create an HDR project in video editing and should use an HDR monitor for this. Of course, the iPhone itself has an HDR and Dolby Vision capable screen. Therefore, HDR videos on the iPhone look much better than non-HDR videos. However, if you transfer your videos to your computer to view them on your monitor or to use them for a bigger project, it's a different story. The video is automatically adjusted during playback and it is hard to tell the difference to a non-HDR video. In video editing, the HDR shot may look completely overexposed and you will have to convert it to a normal looking video. As I said, the subject is complex. If you are interested, watch my related video. Today, to summarize, I would like to say that you should definitely use HDR if you watch your videos mainly on your iPhone. If on the other hand, you are shooting your videos to create a larger project on your computer, then there is no advantage to shooting the video in HDR. It could even lead to disadvantages. The next very interesting topic is ProRes. Under Formats, you can enable Apple ProRes on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. As I said earlier, video footage is heavily compressed to save storage space. Of course, information is lost in the process and artifacts can also occur. This compression can also slow down the editing process of the video if your computer doesn't have enough power. With ProRes, Apple has developed its own codec 
that is particularly well suited for video editing. ProRes therefore has advantages when you edit your videos and also offers better image quality because the video files are much less compressed. The disadvantage is obvious. The video files are bigger and I mean a lot bigger, about 20 times as big. Your iPhone and your hard drives will fill up very quickly and at first glance, as you can see here, there is hardly any difference in image quality. So use ProRes only for the best possible image quality in very special situations. But keep in mind that you also have to transfer and store your footage. ProRes is not a practical solution for normal shots. Let's now take a look at the remaining settings in the record video menu. Right at the beginning, you can set your default frame rate at which the video mode will start. If you live in the PAL region, which would be most states outside the US, you can activate the PAL frame rates here. This would be 25 frames per second instead of 24. This will reduce flickering problems when shooting video in artificial light. As I said before, low frame rates like 24 or 25 frames per second are advantages in low light conditions. Your iPhone has a feature called Auto FPS that will automatically reduce a higher frame rate of 30 or 60 FPS to 24 FPS in low light. Here you can specify whether the feature should only be active at 30 FPS or also at 60 FPS. Personally, this hardly matters to me because, as I said, I mostly use 24 frames per second. If you also want to be sure that the video is always captured at the frame rate you set, you should switch off the feature. If you enable lock camera, the iPhone will no longer automatically switch cameras when you zoom in or out while recording. So you can only zoom digitally. This can be useful because, as I said, the different cameras have different properties. It can therefore look strange if the iPhone changes the lens during the recording. Let's briefly summarize the most important statements of this tutorial in a few tips. Have a close look at the interface and the features of the camera app to get the best possible results in the respective situation. When choosing the camera or lens, keep in mind that the ultrawide lens and the telephoto lens have some disadvantages compared to the main camera. Also, avoid zooming digitally. Use 4K and 24 frames per second for a cinematic look. 30 frames per second if you prefer a more fluid look. I would only use a higher frame rate for slow motion. Use the high efficiency mode. You will save a lot of storage space. Capture your videos in HDR if you will be watching them primarily on your iPhone. If you are shooting for a larger non-HDR project, you can disable HDR. ProRes is only suitable for professionals or in special situations, as it creates gigantic files. And that's it for today. If you found the video interesting, give me a like as feedback. If you want to support this channel, you can use the link in the video description and buy me a coffee. There will be more iPhone tutorials to come, so stay tuned and see you next time.